Okay, in this recording, we're going to go over how you go from base units to the SI prefix units or from the SI prefix units to the base unit. And so this is kind of a unit conversion with metric SI prefixes. And we're gonna use this table. It's in your data booklet. I think it's on the second page of your data booklet on the inside of the cover. And this table has got several prefixes, tera, giga, mega, kilo, hecta, deca, deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, and pico. Each of those amounts is an amount of the base unit. So if I had a tera meter, it would be 10 to the 12 meters long. If I have a kilometer, it is 1,000 or 10 to the 3 meters long. If I have a centimeter, it'll be 0 0.01 meters or 10 to the negative 2 meters long. So when we are talking about going to the base unit or from the base unit, the base units are going to be either meters, grams, liters, or moles. You'll notice that meters has got one, it's, it's got one letter, grams is one letter, liters is one letter. We will not likely see mole a lot in Science 10. Mole has got three letters in the name, but if it was a base unit, it might be something like grams to kilograms. The base unit has got the one letter. Or if I had milliliters to liters, the base unit is the liters. And so that's going to the base unit, whereas grams to kilograms is going from the base unit. So when we go to the base unit, we multiply. So I like to just kind of remember TOX. If we're going to the base unit, it's multiplying. And if we are going from the base unit, it's a divide. So from is a divide. I don't know if a division symbol is better or from D. I don't know. However you want to remember it. But if we're going to the base unit, it's a multiplication. And the number we would multiply by would be either this or this. Probably the numbers in scientific notation are easier as long as you're good with those in the, in the uh, calculator. Once you get into the, some of the more common ones like kilo, you might want to use the thousand instead of 10 to the three. Or if you have um, centi, you might go with the 0 0.01 instead of putting in 10 to the negative two. But they should both work. So an example of this is on this page. So if I'm going from centimeters to meters, in this case, I am going to the base unit, I'm going to multiply. So I take the number that's given to me, 0 0.00710 centimeters, and I'm going to multiply by, centis are 10 to the minus two. So I'm gonna multiply, by 10 to the minus 2. And this is going to give me 0 0.0000710 meters. And so meters are a bigger num bigger amount, and so it's a smaller number of that amount. So it's kind of logical, but I multiplied by the number that was in the table. So that's going to the base unit. If I went, say, from... 0 0.123 kilometers, 2 meters. So that's going to be 2, the base unit, because meters are the base unit. Then I multiply. I'm going to multiply by what they've got for kilo. So 10 to the 3 is what I'm going to multiply this by. So I multiply by 10 to the power of 3, and this is going to give me the number of meters, and it'll give me 123 meters. If I went, in this case, I'm going with 
the meters are my base units. So I'm going from the base units in this case. So I'm going to divide. So I take 45 meters, and I'm going to divide by the number for centis. We already saw those, but they're 10 to the minus 2. That's what the centis are. So I'm going to divide by 10 to the minus 2. This is going to give me 4,500 centimeters. Now, 45 meters is pretty big. This is 100 times bigger because there are 100 centimeters in a meter. So it makes sense. It's a much bigger number of a smaller measurement. Right? But that's because we went from the base unit to centimeters. If we went here, this is grams to kilograms. Grams are the base unit. So this is from. This will be another division. So if I have 503 grams, I'm going to divide by 10 to the 3 because for kilos are 10 to the 3. So I'm going to end up getting... 0 0.503 kilograms. So 503 grams is going to be 0 0.503 kilograms. Let's pick a bit of a more oddball one. So we've got 32,000 nanometers. And in this case, we're going to the base unit. So I'm going to multiply by the number for nanometers. And nanometers are here. Whoops, sorry. The nanometers are here, and they're 10 to the negative 9. So I'm going to take this times 10 to the negative 9, and I put my 32,000 in, and then I'm going to divide by my 10 to the negative 9. And this gives me... No, sorry, I multiplied. I did it wrong on my calculator. I needed to multiply by 10 to the 9. My apologies. Negative 9. And this gives me 3.2 times 10 to the negative 5 meters. Now, here I had 5 sig digs, though. And over here, I don't. So really, I should be keeping my sig digs the same. So this will be 3.2 zero 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 times 10 to the negative five that'll keep my five significant digits that were measured here but he puts it in the right scientific notation okay so that's how we apply it and it's probably the most important thing is spotting this is my base unit so i'm going to i'm going to multiply this is my base unit i'm going from and then i'm going to divide and then I look at what this prefix is, and the millimeters will be 10 to the negative 3. So for this one, I'd have 1968 times 10 to the minus 3. <coughs> the next one has 125, and this is going from, so I'm going to divide by 10 to the minus 3. And that 10 to the minus 3, again, was just in here. Millies are here, and they're 10 to the minus 3. Hopefully that helps you be able to convert between SI prefixes using this kind of a table. There are similar tables in the Science 30 data booklet and in the uh, Chemistry 30 data booklet.